Hi, thank you for watching this video. My name is Bunjin from Yuma Singapore. And today, this video, in this video, I'll be sharing with you what are the opportunities in securing in the China clean tech market and how Clean Connect 201 can help you to secure these opportunities. So these slides were presented two weeks ago on the event co-organized by Yumo and also EWT COI of Niam Poly in Singapore. This event is also supported by IWH of in Nanjing, IPI Singapore and National Eastern Tech Council Center in Shanghai. So these are the content that I will be sharing today. I'll first talk about the opportunities in the Chinese clinical market, especially in the four specific sectors that UMOS has selected, followed by how IWH and also ClinConnect can help you to secure the opportunities in the China clinical market. So first, the overview of China clinical market. The first thing you need to know about the China clinical market is that it is strongly policy driven. Whenever, there, whenever a new market is regulated by the Chinese government, the market size are usually gigantic. The in initial growth can be 20 to 30 percent per year. And because of this high competitiveness, many, com many Chinese companies prefer to adopt foreign technologies to build up their competitive barrier. So this is a lot faster and more effective as compared to developing your own technology. This is a chart uh, done by Yumo, which shows the concentration, market concentration, and also growth for each specific sector of the clean market. Each bubble represents uh, market volume. So you can see that on the right hand side, those are the market sectors that is, have that has rapid growth in recent years. And today we will talk about VOC treatment, hazardous waste treatment, industrial wastewater treatment and also soil remediation. So the first one, VOC treatments opportunities. So VOC is also known as volatile organic compounds. It's defined as the com organic compounds that can take part in atmospheric photochemical reaction. So some of the sources of VOCs are petrochemical industry, coating industry, printing industry, paper and pulp industry, and also textile. And some of the negative effects that VOC has are biological toxicity. It can create PM 2.5 and also and ozone, especially petrochemical smokes. So what are the characteristics of VOC emissions in China? Firstly, they are non usually these emissions are non-governed. And the sources, pollution sources are widely distributed. We wipe with a large variety of pollutants occurring. The emission accounting is also very complex and difficult to account for. Usually VOC emissions are from these three areas, Shandong, Jiangsu and Zhejiang, because they are the three highly industrialized provinces in China. So let us look at the policy side of VOC treatments. In the 5-year plan of China, um, the focus is actually more, more on this repeat this pulverization, denitrification, and also dust removal. For VOC controls, most of the policies are were usually were issues mostly in 2014. And finally, in the 30th five-year plan, which is 2016-2020, VOC became the main concern of Chinese government. They set a target of 10% reduction in emissions. And emissions fees and relevant subsidies it's also expected to be gradually implemented. And it is in this period, the 30th Fiber Plan, you can expect to see large com VOCs companies emerging in the Chinese market. Current status of VOCs controls in China. On the petrochemical side, various standards and also regulation requirements were set to meet in 2017. From the packaging in printing side, <coughs> the VOC emission in 2014 is, is 2 million tons per year. However, only 53 out of 469 uh, press printers has, uh, has installed some form of emission controls. So among the 40,000 enterprises, only a few large enterprises implemented 
in the EPOC's control system. So you can see from the numbers that there are many SMEs still waiting to see if the government really require them to install such EPOC's control system. On the paying in and coating side, they are usually they usually got counter for the non-organized emissions and it can be up to 15 90 percent. So from Shanghai in the Shanghai part, standards have already been issued to try to control this emission sources of VOCs from the paint in and coating industry. The market sizes of VOCs. The total revenue of VOC treatment in 2014 is 7 billion RMB according to the China Environmental Protection Association. Then the investment demand of the industry is estimated to be 40 billion RMB. So you can see that the VOC actually the VOC market segment and the market is quite scattered. Currently the VOC treatment companies are all complete within the, the few leading industries. And if you are thinking about going to the VOC market of China, you need, be, you, need, you need to be aware of possible low price competition due to the high competitiveness of the market. The current business model of VOC treatment in China are usually in two parts. The first is the equipment sales contract and the third is the third party management service contract. So for example, a printing, a packaging printing industry of a whole city, county, or industrial park will entrust a third party for VOC treatment for their for their package services. In the future, we foresee that Yuma foresees that the leak detection and repair and also process control and end treatment technology will be the key in the VOC treatment. Nevertheless, the current VOC treatment technology and level in China is still quite weak. It is dominated by large capital sufficient enterprises, especially the state-owned enterprises such as Petrochemy and Petro China, Sanopec. So opportunity for the SMEs still remains to be seen, but there are definitely markets remain for them to grow. Next, hazardous waste management. In China, hazardous waste is defined as waste that poses a threat to human health or the environment and usually have characteristics of toxicity, flammability, reactivity, corrosion, explosive, or infectiousness. So under the National Hazardous Waste List released in 2016, the list of waste are classified in the 46 category and 509, 579 sorts. So as compared to the as compared to the hazardous waste list in Singapore, if you look at the go and look at the list online. China has a much longer list and much more detailed classification. Probably also because they have much more waste and pollution to, to account for as you know as compared to Singapore. So what are the types of hazardous waste in China? 70% of them come from industrial and 14% in medical, and the rest are from other sources. So today we will focus just on the industrial waste. Uh, industrial waste or part for the hazardous waste because they are the majority. So for this graph, we can see the growth of industrial hazardous waste production and disposal from 2016 to 2015. So in 2015, the hazardous waste generation reached 39.76 million tons, which is an increase of 9.43% year on year. And the comparison utilization is 204 million ton and the disposal rate is 11 million ton. However, because there are many small scale disposal plants that doesn't effectively report their data accurately, the actual production of hazardous waste in China is far more than the amount of data shown. So industrial hazardous waste generate account, of, account for three to five percent of the industrial waste. Mm, so we estimate that 80 million tonne of production volume is a more accurate value instead of the 11 million tonne in disposal. In 2015, 52 million tonne per year of 
or proof hazardous waste unit were issued. However, only 50 million tons are in actual operation. Hence, there's a 70, 37 million tons of gap waiting for the market to fill in. So is hazardous waste management in China a profitable market? Let us first look at the cost of treatment. The cost of treatment in China for hazardous waste is around 1,300 RMB per ton. The charges are 3,005 to 4,000 RMB per ton. For according to the research data of E20 platform in China, the gross profit of the listed company of a China A share hazardous waste disposal business is has reached 40 to 50 percent in the past five years, and the net interest is about 20 to 30 percent. The prediction of the hazardous waste market is estimated to be 886 million yuan in 20, billion yuan in 2020. So for all this number, you can see that this is a highly profitable level market. So if you have the technology for hazardous waste treatment, you should go to China. So in China, parties that engage in collection, storage and disposal of hazardous waste must have a hazard, hazardous waste management license. So in 215, there are 2034 business licenses that has some sort of technology or has waste treatment, waste treatment processes that can treat such hazardous waste. So if you are so for hazardous waste treatment technology in China, the investment skills of such projects are usually high. The equipment price are also high. But the, dom the domestic, the locally China hazardous waste treatment technology and also their treatment methods are still low as compared to the global market. Therefore, to enter the hazardous waste market of China, you need a high capital and also an advanced technology and talent to apply the technology to the market itself. So the top 10 companies of hazardous waste of China in China only account for 6.8% of the treatment capacity. So this shows that the market still lacks a leading enterprise for to lead the hazardous waste market, which points to opportunities. Next, let us look at industrial wastewater treatment. In 2015, 73 million tons of wastewater were discharged in China, according to Environmental Statistics Data 2016. Among them, 27% of them are from industrial stocks or around 20 million tons. So let us look at the sources of the industrial wastewater. From on the right side, you can see the top five industrial wastewater sources has already have already accounted for more than half of the all of all the industrial wastewater. These are also these are usually industries that they are severely contaminated. And therefore, it is the top priority of the Chinese government to treat wastewater from such sources. <coughs> so the total wastewater treatment amount actually has been increasing slowly along, uh, along the years, but the industrial wastewater discharge has been continuously decreasing due to the policy of you know, uh, water reuse and also restriction on water wastewater discharge. So we predict that um, in this 35% so until 2020, the discharge capacity was likely to continue to decrease because of the strong policies and effectiveness of the Chinese government on enforcing such controls. So to, to fully understand the water industry of China market, whether it's industrial wastewater or municipal wastewater or wastewater in general, we first need to understand the water tank regulation that issues during this 35 year plan. The final objective of water tank are to improve national water environment quality and to recover the water ecosystem. It sets the tone of wastewater treatment in China 
and it is more of action plan rather than just a talk and no actions. So let us go through one by one on all the 10 regulations of the water tank. The first is the comprehensive control of industrial waste water pollution. So it, it makes sure that all small industrial corporations with poor environmental protection facilities are shut down unless they you know, improve their wastewater discharge treatment. And we renovate the 10 key industries with cleaner, cleaner technology and centralized treatments for wastewater from industrial parks and other industries. Second, economy structure transforming and upgrading to adjust the industry structure and eliminate low level equipment and technology. And also to enhance industrial wastewater reuse and encourage seawater direct use as industrial water. Third, water saving to encourage industrial wastewater, industrial water savings and also water consumption, consumption indicator through active monitoring especially in, use, in engaging of uh, smart technology. Fourth, technology backup <coughs> to develop advanced technology on desalination with industrial high selling concentration wastewater and to promote third-party third treatment of wastewater industrial parks. Fifth, to make full use of the market mechanism and set proper scheme for non-residential water use. To complete a charge scheme on wastewater discharge fee including water saving and tax discount scheme and to provide incentive form for companies to increase industrial water efficiency. Six, environmental enforcement. To complete a system of regulation and standard on industrial wastewater and enhance supervision and enforcement. And to complete pollutants measuring system. This is especially true if you know about, if you heard about news from China where the central government sends their enforcement team to the various provinces make sure they check out each government and also each industrial park to ensure to, to ensure you know there's no illegal waste for the discharge and every time they are there the local government will have a nightmare because it affects their performance and also the local industry local economy so seven water environment management to strictly control environmental risk on industrial corporation and, and others and set proper control measures to manage, to manage the risk. 8. To ensure their safety in the water ecosystem, especially there's to prevent any underground water pollution from the industrial wastewater. 9. To set clear division of responsibility to make sure the companies and corporations understand their responsibility on, waste, uh, on illegal wastewater discharge and to set proper schemes and targets for companies to follow. Third, and finally, the 10th, the public participation and supervision to make companies publish their pollution indicators and announce the situation regularly so that public can participate and monitor the wastewater discharge in near their areas. <coughs> so some of the technology focus that comes up from the 30th 5 year plan are firstly, the radioactive wastewater treatment so, radioactive wastewater uh, should be treated properly, obviously, because of you know the high radioactive characteristics. So, this is an opportunity, and there's a demand for such technology because the nuclear power plant is estimated to be doubled in China by twenty fifty. And in the the in the thirty five year plans, there's also great emphasis on nuclear safety and radioactive, and radioactive pollution prevention. Therefore. If you, have, if you have technology for radioactive wastewater treatment, the China market is an attractive market with a high barrier because it also requires advanced technology which the China are lacking itself. Second, online monitoring and remote control system including use of smart water technology. <coughs> so the water tank and water pollution prevention Law all stated the importance of supervision and monitoring. So they all underline that the industrial companies should be equipped with online monitoring facilities for supervision purpose. Companies should have you know any real time controls on wastewater discharge, including the use of remote control 
to increase the management efficiency with the least input. The use of smart water also optimizes the water reuse and treatment process. And of course, provide a comprehensive control of, on all the water situation. So if you are on the smart water technology companies or online monitoring companies, this is an opportunity for you. Third, water reuse and utilization. So you can see from just now, the water tank regulation includes the water reuse and also water efficiencies for the industry, for the industrial wastewater reuse. So the emphasis has the great emphasis has been focused on MBR and also zero liquid discharge technology because they are famous and highly effective for water reuse. Lastly, high concentration wastewater treatment, especially for pollutants such as ammonia, nitrogen, and saline. Now let's move on to soil remediation. <coughs> Similarly as water, to understand the soil radiation market, we need to understand the soil tank regulation, also published in the 13th Phyto Tank. The objective is to improve the soil quality and ensure safe agricultural products and create a healthy living environment for people in China. So some of the key objectives of soil radiation from the soil tank regulation are by 2020 to curb the nation's increasing soil pollution, by 2030 to thoroughly control environmental risk of soil and by 2050 to improve the environmental quality of soil completely. <coughs> by 2020, China also aimed to make sure that 90% of the contaminated farm land can be used safely and, there, and ensure that there is also concurrently monitored and evaluated uh, survey based on the standards set by the Chinese government by 2020. So from the technology point of view, the soil radiation technology in China is still, there is still, there's still a big gap as compared to advanced foreign technology, especially the ones from Europe and also US, which the market is relatively mature with the 30 years of experience. So technology and know-how for in-situ immobilization, bioremediation, safe disposal, and also resource recovery are in high demand in China right now. You more estimate that the Chinese government will spend tens of billions of yuan each year on demonstration project of heavy metal contaminated soil restoration and also groundwater comprehensive treatments in the coming five years or four years. So the Chinese government of focusing so much on the soil radiation, not just for environmental reasons, but also for social and economic reasons. Because uh, contaminated soil has a domino effect in the Chinese society, involving also food safety, water safety, and even depreciation, depreciation of commercial property. So some of the more polluted areas of, in, of the soil in China are Yangtze River Delta and also Pearl River Delta. Generally, generally, the developed eastern and central side of China. So, soil remediation projects are actually quite a high risk project because they are usually invisible and entangled risks that you can't be seen that involve environmental issues such as, such as underground water pollution. Many times, when the powers become apparent, you, the original polluting source is already long gone. So it's hard to track what is actually happening and what causes it. So, so where is the money actually from? Since as compared to you know water and air treatment, you can't really charge. The, the company can't really charge and gain like, returns for soil remediation project. So according to the Financial Times, you know, Chinese government required by the 7 trillion RMB to clean up all the contaminated soil in China. So this is equivalent to one third of the ch entire China foreign exchange reserve, which already exceeded the funds planned for water and also air pollution. So according to the Jiangsu Institute of Environmental Industry, there are 48 projects from 2016, 2006 to 2013, 
with open information over the source of funding and 2 billion RMB of total investments were accounted for so let us look at where the money are from so you can see for 7% of the money are self-funded by the companies that does the project 28% by government funding and 22% through PPP projects so the, for the, on the China soy Indonesia market side none of the parties here actually found the perfect solution on where, how they should fund the soy Indonesia project but fear not <coughs> for foreign companies that are, they are interested in soy Indonesia market the real question that you should ask is what Chinese companies should you approach and partner with? So you more insights, we conducted a thorough research and summarized the big seven of the top players in the current soy mediation sector in China. So these are the top seven soy mediation companies in China right now. And majority of them, or half of them, are from Beijing with strong ties with the government which actually contributed to their success of being the top seven. <laughs> so this top player has their success usually because they, of their strong network rather than their advanced technology. Which brings us to the secret to China clean time market. So this does not just apply to the soil mediation but to all, all of the clean time market in China. And the secret is it is necessary to develop a trustworthy local partners or a middleman to int introduce your technology and products to these big, big players for example, especially you know, the state-owned companies and listed companies So how then can you find the trustworthy local partners and middlemen if you have no idea where to start from? So first, through, you, through the Umo platform, I would like to introduce you to International Water Hub in Nanjing or in short, we call it IWH so IWH is located in Singapore Nanjing Eco High Tech Island it is jointly promoted by the Jiangsu government and also the Singapore government which is actually a G2G project between Nanjing and Singapore so IWH is developed by Sanko Industry also a well-known company from Singapore and it's the first commercial building for water-related industry on the island. Actually, not just water-related, but they also welcome all environmental-related industries. So it is a business hub that's committed to create an ecosystem for international water and environmental industrial players for sharing and also promoting R&D, technology and innovation. Now this is a group structure of SEMCOP, just a brief introduction of SEMCOP. So SEMCOP, a renowned listed company from Singapore, they have businesses in utilities, marine and also urban development. They also have quite a few of wastewater treatment plants in China, Nanjing itself, which explains why they are having these big projects in Nanjing. So why Nanjing, you will ask? Well, Nanjing is the second largest commercial center in East China after Shanghai, also ranked fourth in Fox. 217 top 25 best commercial cities in mainland China. Also, location of the most prominent educational institute in the region. So, are you do you feel attracted yet? Yeah, more because IWH or International Water Hub is located conveniently on the Eco Haita Island itself. Or from the map, you can see is the SNEI Jiang Xingzhou. It is just 20 to 30 minutes taxi rides away from the high speed rail and the high speed rail station is just 75 minutes from the Shanghai high speed rail so very convenient if you uh, to travel in bit if you are required to travel between Shanghai and Nanjing you know frequently there's also an MRT line on the island itself so if you like you know if you are based there and you like to travel around in Nanjing it is also very convenient This is an artist impression of the IWH itself. 
it, it is designed by a renowned architect and it does and has a surface area of 34,000 meters square. The building is also certified a LEED GO building and China 2 Star Green Building certification. So these are the facilities that you will get to enjoy if you have an office over there. So you get office space, you also lab spaces. The multi-purpose hall can suit all kinds of purpose according to your need. And there are meeting rooms, you know, for you to use an exhibition hall to present your technology as a product to any visitors that come to our WH. There's also Sky, Dar Sky Garden, retail, you know, retail shops and Central Plaza that benefits the tenants of the IWH and also local resi nearby residents. Now you may ask why am I promoting IWH since I'm from Umo and not from Sancorp. So, Umo and IWH actually signed an agreement on 31st of May actually under the winners of the Singapore and also Jiangsu government because we are, Umo is appointed by IWH to run an eco tech accelerator or actually in full name is called Global Eco Tech Innovation Center or GTEC so this accelerator is a SME focused accelerator to help SMEs to enter China market through our 12 month accelerating program. So, in this program, you will get mentors from the financial sector and also industrial sectors, and we will provide services and also lessons for you to understand the China market well so that you can focus on business building and also find the correct partners to enter the China effectively in the correct way and also the most efficient way. So Yumo is selected because of our proven track record since 2014. We have connected 400 plus overseas company from 25 countries. We have made, through the matchmaking, we have made 300 plus proposal and has a success rate of 1 in 10. The last 4 years, we have made 240 million RMB transaction. So these are the services that you can enjoy if you want to enter our accelerator program. So you will get market and customer success, mentorship and insights from both the industry and also financial sector. You will get in the investor networks if you need any investments from China side. And also increase your industrial visibility through our marketing services and also our, our, our events such as ClinConnect 218. So the, for the overall GTEC, the IWH was support by providing an infrastructure. For example, you can get to have co-working spaces and also lab coach co-sharing lab spaces if you need any lab. There are of course you know meeting rooms and also auditorium as mentioned just now. On the service side, you you more will be providing the services especially on our you know, market research service and also corporate marketing services. We also provide like, financing services you know, to provide financial advisors on you know, writing Chinese business plan and of course we provide China training, so China focused training for you to understand how the China market and China businesses works. And of course, like all other accelerators, we will organize regular activities where we invite you know, China industrial, environmental industrial players to come and have a talk and invite various investors and also mentors to have bonding, to have a sharing session so that you can have a better understanding of the China market itself. So this accelerator is looking for overseas background companies with unique technology or products and China is one of the strategic market to consider within the next few years. The company needs to have very revenue generated in the, their local market and is willing to accept China investment on their China entity company. So this brings us back to Clean Connect to one day which will be happening this year, November 15 and 16, in Nanjing. So Clean Connect will be held 
in Nanjing. Okay, not is the the most updated venue is actually not on the island itself, but on nearby hotel where on the top of the bar, on the top there there's a bar, and you can see the whole island view by itself, which is a very impressive view, also including the whole river. So King Kong will, will be happening on fifteen and sixteen November. So why is King Connect? It is actually a conference, an annual conference, the fifth time this year, since 2014. An annual conference that's focused, that's focused on business matchmaking and also uh, team-focused conference itself. So the highlight of the, this King Connect is actually business matching, where we will do conduct pre-arranged business matching you know, according to the demand and also needs of the China market. And through various conferences, you can also understand the China clinical market itself on the specific sectors better by yourself. For the last four years, we have 427 Chinese companies that participated in our event, 131 overseas companies and also 98 investors. So last year, in 2017, we conducted 232 precise pre-arranged matchmaking in two days. So among these 232, there are some of the more popular are uh, BioGuild, which you can actually you can see on the screen itself. Yeah. So BioGuild, an Australian industrial waste water treatment company, has 18 matchmaking in two in the two days. So basically, besides the conference and good show presentation of themselves. They just sat at the business matchmaking corner the whole day with each half an hour of business matchmaking. matchmaking. So they are popular because, as mentioned, industrial waste water technologies are highly in demand in China right now. So if you have technology that the China clean market needs, you can be as popular and meet as many uh, Chinese companies as Biogeo or even more. So based on our statistics, uh, 70% of the Chinese companies that took part in King Connect are the decision maker of the company. So usually they are CEO or managing director, which can make an impact if you manage to have a first you know, good impression with them. So this is the timeline of our King Connect. We officially launched it in June this year. So if you are to sign up with us now to register for Clean Connect, you together with your company information and technology of course, we will do a marketing for you until November and con and also arrange a pre-arranged matchmaking based on based on need demand from the Chinese side. So on that day, or actually before you reach uh, Nanjing itself, you already know what are the companies that you will be meeting and we also provide the company information for you to have a, at least have a, you know, a, an idea of who, are, who you are, are you meeting on that day. So even after the event, we will try, we, not we will try, okay, we will follow up. We will follow up to, ensure, you know, to increase the chance of a successful partnership or at, least, or at least a project partnership. So of course we cannot guarantee the success of each company because it is still up to how the both of you, the both parties actually discuss. However, what we can do, what we can do is to increase the chance by you know closing the gap between how you know the working culture and also language barrier, which we can definitely provide. So this is the agenda for the two days of King Connect. So we will have six forums in this year's King Connect. The first one is the Next Gen Energy and Industrial Innovation Summit, which is actually co-host co-hosting by we together with King Tech Group from USA. The second will be a Euro China Water Treatment Symposium, followed by VOC treatment, and also environmental remediation, waste and value, and finally smart environment. So why why should you join Think Connect 218? Because it is a very effective matchmaking event that is just focusing on matchmaking. 
So unlike any other exhibition where you know there's exhibition and also conferences and matchmaking, you the people you meet might be quite you know random and also mixed. King Connect is a highly focused event where the Chinese company that is that took part are uh, just focusing on finding technologies that they are interested. And many times before they even go to the event, they have already know who they are who they want to look for and their their interest to be to partner with you are usually very high. So we will provide detailed matchmaking schedule a few days before the conferences and we also provide live translator and also note and also assistance to, for note taking uh, depending on you know whether you need a translator or not. For Singapore companies usually you some of them can speak Mandarin themselves so they might not need a translator. But for our clients from European and also from US, we will provide we will definitely provide a live translator for Chinese and Mandarin. <coughs> So if you attend the 16 sub forum, you can also understand the technology trends by yourself, you know, in person. So then you do not have to worry whether the speaker is speaking in Chinese or English because we also have live translation device. And because this event is focused on matchmaking and we want to increase the chance of success as much as possible, we also provide professional follow-up services to, to increase the chance of both parties establishing any kind of partnerships. So one of the case studies that we have is also BioGuild from last year. So through meeting through the matchmaking services from Pinconnect, they managed to meet the partner and secure a pilot pro pilot testing projects opportunity in China right now. So Umo is the main organizer of Pinconnect to one seven. We are honored to have strategic partners such as Streaming Venture, King Tech Group from US, uh, Thermo Fisher Scientist, Sam Corp, Industry, and also Carriers. Some of our sponsors and partners are of course IWH itself, and also EC2R from European Union, Clean and Clean Tech Challenge from Denmark, Tweet also from Europe, and National Eastern Tech Transfer Center and IE Expo of China. So you can see we have many partners especially from you know, European Union and also Denmark itself, where there are many advanced clean tech companies participating in this year's Clean Connect 218. So for Singapore companies, the the benefit is are that you don't get you don't get to meet just the Chinese uh, business company and business business and companies to explore the China market, but you also get to meet the European companies with advanced clean tech technologies that are interested to come into Southeast Asia. So, not just that you can as you can venture your business further to China, you can also increase your market chance, market share, and also has chance to work with European partners by exploring with them in the Southeast Asia region. And of course, definitely, you also get to see IWH yourself and see what they have to provide, and also how is the environment like in the island itself, which I can say is pretty good. And because they built according to Singapore standard, and there's even a round island track of 24 kilometers if you like running. So these are some of the photos from last year, Clean Connect 2017. Photos from 2016 that was held in Hangzhou. 2015 in Shanghai. And of course our first Clean Connect also held in Shanghai in 2014. So in summary of what I have mentioned throughout the videos, first, China clean tech market has huge demand for advanced foreign technology, especially in the fast growing market sectors. And to understand the market, you need to first need to understand the policies of China environmental market, especially the water ten, air ten, and soil ten regulation. And you should get the opportunities before 2020 because that's where the 30 year 5 year plan ends. And we are not sure what will come out in the 14 5 year plan, which is 2020, 2021 to 2026, 25. So we you more predict that the encouragement and also incentive for environmental protections 
regulation might not be as strong as this Tatiana Piper plan and they might change direction to focus more on smart technology or maybe other IoT services in, instead of the traditional and uh, clean tech market. So to develop the China market, you definitely need a trustworthy partner. The trustworthy partner or middleman. So Clean Connect and IWH are definitely one of your choices for a trustworthy China partner because we know the market. We know the market. Uh, we know, of course, we know the market, and with infrastructure support and also service structure support. Investor support and also business support, we are able to help you to grab the opportunity, opportunity and find the right partners that you need in China market. And lastly, to share something very important to understand about China business. Relationship is everything. Everything is possible in China. Nothing is ever easy. Patient is the key to success. So the answer yes might not necessarily indicate to agreement. If you hear any words such as you don't understand China, it means there's a disagreement. If you sign a contract with any Chinese partner, it means the beginning of the real negotiation. If you ever feel discouraged, think about rule number three. When you don't know what to do, no idea where you should go, just remember that relationship is everything in China. Thank you for listening to my video. If you want to find out more about the China Kingdom market or you more yourself, you can always find us, find us on Facebook or LinkedIn. If you can read Chinese, you can also find us on our on WeChat on you more or you more official WeChat account where we publish uh, information of Chinese Chinese clean tech market very, very regularly. So once again, this video or event is presented together by you more and EWT and EWTCI of Singapore. Supported by International Water Hub, IPI Singapore, and National Eastern Tech Transfer Center of Shanghai. Thank you, and I hope you have a nice day, and hope to see you in King Connect 2018.